One, hey, two, hey, one, hey, two, hey, three, hey, four, hey. hey. It's time for another episode of Actors from the Dark Side. I'm your girl Raven Moon, an actor with passion. And I'm Ladias Muhammad, actor with purpose. This is part two of our last episode uh, about Underground Railroad, which came out on Amazon Prime yep. and is streaming, I believe, they're on their second season. So we're going to dive into episode two. Yes. Episode one was great. Thank you for leading that, Ladias. Oh, sure. um, with this episode, what I'd like to do is just kind of take a look at it it was really well done Mm -hmm. watching it a couple of times I'm like well they actually really push some issues here so I'd like to start with uh, just naming some of the historical contradictions that I noticed in the in the film which also added to some of the um, allure of what was actually going on behind the scenes that's deeper that might be hard to pick up on if you're not really that well versed in slave history and slave knowledge so the first thing that I noticed and I believe this child was in episode one too but they have a very well dressed maybe six or seven year old who's a driver who can clearly read and write because he's a scribe uh, and all of these things and I sat there thinking to myself how could this piece of property because that's what slaves were back then Mm -hmm. this valuable piece of property be moving about so freely, right? Yeah. So did that did that raise anything for yeah. you? Yeah. Um. So b- before we, we we before we bounce off that, yeah, uh, I just want to talk about the because there's some characters you're going to cover. Oh, sure, sure, yeah, sure. I'm sure. just going to yeah. uh, in the, in episode two, these are going to be pertinent because Cora, who is Thuso and Budo, mm-hmm. Caesar, who is Aaron Pierre, Me- uh, Megan Boom, who yes. is Miss Lucy, mm-hmm. um, Will Powder, who is Sam. Uh, he's one of the abolitioners, mm-hmm. abolitionists. Joel Edgerton, who's Ridgeway, he's a slave catcher. Yes. And Homer, the little boy who yes. you're referencing, is Chase Dillon. Yes. Okay. So, so yes, yes, this little well, first of all, he's absolutely freaking adorable. So cute. You. you talk about a very stellar young actor. He he really had me. Um, I was like, why is he so well dressed mm-hmm. and he's hanging out with this this slave catcher? Mm-hmm. And they really did a good job on that. Mm -hmm. I was super convinced. It just made me think about this little boy. He was he he actually had his freedom. That that is revealed. Mm -hmm. He had his freedom, but he didn't have anywhere to go. Sure. So we talk about being slaves and then being free. Well, it's hard to be free when you have no skills or nowhere to go or nothing to do or no one and all you know is reporting to your counterpart and so this little boy was in survival mode he was like because mm-hmm. he tried to free him he, he was the little boy was free yep. and Richardson wanted him to go mm-hmm. but he did not no and it's really interesting to me I think one of the things that hit me was that if you're in nefarious business, right? If you're doing kind of yucky work or bad work, that children are usually your best soldiers mm. because they haven't gained the consciousness to really be at battle with themselves for what they're doing. You know, they, you can very much justify um, doing these things if you're getting nice clothes and you're getting to drink the whiskey and you're getting to do all, you know, and you're you're getting, you know, appreciated by these people that, that are, you know, hurting everybody else around you. So that was, that was an interesting takeaway for me was yeah. that maybe he was brought in so young just because he was so young because it's easier with younger people sometimes to get them to, you know, go along, right? So that, that was interesting to me. Yeah, I, and, and I, I, I hear you. I do, I do, and I'm not sure how far you got. Maybe I'm jumping the gun, but he did free him. He was a free slave, mm-hmm. and he told the boy he... He freed him, um, but the boy didn't want to go. Right. Yeah. 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 And so he was like, I don't know why he wanted to stay with me, you know? 
and the boy just kept coming back and tagging along. So he had sure. the right to put a young little boy. You can cultivate him, mm-hmm. you know, make him into what you want him to be. Because that boy wasn't buying his own clothes. You know that. that no, you know what I'm no, saying. No, he wasn't. So, yeah, mm-hmm. and he was brainwashed. Yes, he was really nice. brainwashed. That yes. is all he knew. Yeah, but I, I think in even in the back back of his mind, whether he was brainwashed or not. He was in survival mode. Yes. I am not going to be a slave again, mm-hmm. but I don't have any skills, and I'm going to have this. He actually was quite a clever. I'm going to have this white man take care of me. He he was very clever, and yeah. it's one of the things that um, drives me crazy <laughs> when we look back on slave history yeah. is that you know a lot of people try to put blacks down for even letting themselves, quote unquote, be slaves, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the thing, you know, you you touched it. Right, that it's survival mode. Yeah. That yes, you had black overseers because they were surviving. Um, everybody was in survival mode at that time. So yes, they did things that were sad and despicable and all of those things to our standards today. But sometimes you had to. You had to do that. You had to let. You had to let somebody have your body. You had to let somebody. You know, work you like crazy. You know, you just had to. There was no choice in the matter. And so many people were in traumatic survival mode at that point in time. So yeah. Does that make you think of Twelve Years a Slave? A little and bit. Like he was. I if I have to play the fiddle mm-hmm. or you know the violin. If I have to play it to survive, I'm going to do whatever I yes. got to do so I can free myself. Absolutely. Not really me. Isn't that and so and, and, and even today, mm-hmm. even today as actors, sometimes we'll take a role so we can get a paycheck. That's right. Taraji P. Henson has said it several times. She said, I'm not one of those actors. I can go two or three years, do a blockbuster film, and then I can go not work for two or three years. She goes, I gotta work all day, every yep. day around the clock. And sometimes she has to take roles that are stigmatized with you know the loud black woman mm-hmm. but she's it gets her paid mm-hmm. you know so mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. such a good point yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so the other historical contradiction that i found mm-hmm. is that at the opening of this episode we see south carolina mm-hmm. as this beautiful bastion of freedom you have this theater production going on and cora's one of the actors and you know and then you see her walking through the streets with really gorgeous dress on and getting her hair done and going through the marketplace and you're like whoa which South Carolina is this this isn't what I was told about (laughs) um so um so that that really struck me in terms of another contradiction Mm -hmm. um even seeing black people being able to gain their own way in terms of employment Caesar now has a job I yeah he's working at that that mill Mm -hmm. um and kind of gets in trouble for being able to read um And the one thing that really gets me is during the theater scene, you know, there's a white man who's kind of the director of this theater, and they have Cora in this overly grotesque mask, uh, standing out in a field to be a savage. And, um, you know, you hear him later telling a, a group of children that, oh, we got them from Africa and got them to stop speaking that gobbledygook. And did you know that they used to drink out of the heads of skulls? And, oh, you know, and all of this. And then um, I believe he goes to the, the actors and says, you know, we need to make this more authentic. We yeah. need to really let them see how bad it was in Africa. And he is like, you know... For you, by you, boo-boo, and that, yeah, tell me if that touched on your nerves. That <laughs> is an incredible historical <laughs> contradiction because if I came to this town that is supposed to cultivate me, educate me to, to read, and I got these beautiful garments on, why am I perpetuating a history that you think you know? Mm. And then you're saying, have this more authentic. It's like, bitch, I lived it. I was on the plantation. Mm-hmm. How much more authentic can it be? So to me, you were still perpetuating that until we got them from Africa. Yes. They were savages. Yes. And we cultivated them and taught them how to read and how to write and how to put their hairs together and wear their petticoats and dresses. Mm-hmm. And... That was the biggest contribute contradiction I seen in that whole thing, mm-hmm. and and you pointed something out. 
Why are they using FUBU? Because right. that, that was Lady, uh, what was her name? Miss Lucy. Mm hmm This is for you, by you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, now, whoever wrote that shit, you triggered me. Yep, yeah, me too. You I got triggered several times. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good choice. Yeah. Good, good, good yeah. one. I'm like, like, who was that? That was our 90s thing, and that's what like, we were trying to do. I dare you put that now as gonna, mm. associated with Mm. Wrong. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> wrong. So wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other, the other big contradiction for me was that um, being able to read was illegal in most of the southern states. Um, after I think 1830, and then after 1837, you had Dred Scott, which basically said no matter what you, whether you had papers or not you could still be taken as property. So um, you don't really get a, a clear sense of exactly what time period this is, but it does seem a little bit later in the 1800s, closer to the Civil War. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was very interesting. But then I realized, and this is kind of the second segue of what I took from this episode, is that they're in a kind of make-believe, mm. Uh, South Carolina abolitionist camp, a reformer camp, if you will. So all of these, um, I don't know, images of kind of freedom and, and prosperity and all of those things, that's actually being concocted by these really rich abolitionist whites. So then when you start getting that veil pulled away, it makes you view what you've seen in a different lens. And then it starts to make sense. Yeah. So yeah. So um, like I, I, I was wanting to ask you, mm -hmm. do you feel like the abolitionists were the antagonist? So I'm on the fence. Because it's like well-meaning white folks. So with <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the fence. I think, I think, okay, so there's a dual answer. Because Sam, in my opinion, I think he was an innocent bystander. He was not, I, I believe, at least it's portrayed that I received it that way, that he was an innocent bystander and believer that they weren't doing this. Mm -hmm. that, 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 you know, the behind the scenes stuff. I definitely believe the abolitionists were an antagonist. And I don't want to jump the gun because you can probably do a segue. Because, again, right there, you're cultivating me, but you're still teaching me history. Yes. Okay? And then, you know, as we move in, I'll elaborate. Sure. Um, there is, they're not doing that for their, you know, just because they want to say, I helped someone. There, get, there is a, an, a, an attached factor to why they're doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you're going to... Yes. You know, reveal yeah. that. So yeah, because it could be it could even be a monetary factor, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So at one point, um, we see them having a big ball mm -hmm. for all of the blacks, and at one point, one of the women comes in screaming like a lunatic, mm -hmm. "Where's my baby?" Yeah, they took my baby. Right, and all of a sudden, you find out that there are no children in this little South Carolina camp, yeah. and uh, then you find out that they're trying to sterilize. Mm -hmm. the women in this camp yeah. so that they can't have any more children. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that there was a nativist movement. Mm -hmm. And um, the word native might confuse you, but basically they were upset that uh, white women weren't able to have as many babies as black women could. Mm -hmm. um, you, yeah, some women on the plantation might have 10 to 15 mm -hmm. children back to back. And here, here's... Here's the missus of the house, and she can't even have one. Um, so there was a, a lot of jealousy over that, that, you know, supposedly they're God's people, and supposedly they're supposed to have all this prosperity, which is children, and left and right, they're not able to produce. But yet these people that they've enslaved, they're able to produce left and right, and they're able to do this. So there was a huge nativist movement to stop black women from producing offspring. And I think that's kind of what's tied into that mm -hmm. um, sterilization offer with the doctors and everything else there. Yeah. But there's so much 
like I said, well-meaning white folk, um, there's so much prejudice that comes through. Like, you find out that these people, yes, they're working for a greater good, but are black people still a problem? Are they still something to be dealt with? Are they, you know, so did you get any feelings like that? Or yes. So, so yes, obviously there was some good because now they're teaching people how to read. But when Cora went into the store to ask about the penny candy mm -hmm. and the owner was like, we don't have any penny candy. She goes, well, why wouldn't you? Because she sees a store across the street mm -hmm. where there's white kids purchasing penny candy. And then it triggered her and she realizes there's no children, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. black children. And Miss Lucy was like, well, if you were going to go off to this town, you can get married and have children, but you don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. She goes, but I, it's my choice. And she said, well, you're going to go ahead and do the procedure. She goes, no, 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 no. I was told it's, it's my, my choice. choice. Now, when I said there was an attachment factor to whatever they were doing, one, they were experimenting on the men mm -hmm. to see how much a black man or a specimen, as they would think him to be, can endure. Yes. So they were poisoning him. Now, what I want to know, when you talk about antagonists, was that store owner an antagonist? Did he know those herbs that he was giving to those black men were poisoning them? I wonder that too. Because I bet you he, God bless him, They did. didn't have no damn penny candy, but they sure as hell had a whole lot of liquor. And that also stood out to me. See, so, mm -hmm, and they're good. Mm -hmm. They still perpetuate this mm -hmm. crap today mm -hmm. in our communities. Yes, they do. And the, the, but you know what? As a responsible citizen, we have not protested against to get those liquor stores out of our community but going back to that the, the attachment factor is when that woman yelled at the ball mm -hmm. they took my babies they took my babies so she had children yes she had babies and I bet you they sold them into slavery yes so yes I think there there were antagonists a child slave a baby slave with legs and arms that was as much of a as a house Yes. That's how fucking valuable we were. Yes. That was the price of a goddamn house. So mm -hmm. you better believe they were turning a profit on this quote-unquote camp, you know? Oh, of course. And at the same time trying to brainwash and get the blacks under them to... And experimenting. Yes, absolutely. It absolutely. Was, it mm. bull snapped. It was a lot. It was bull snapped. It was. <laughs> it was a whole lot of bull snapped. So, <laughs> Mom would always say, all that glitter ain't gold. That's right. You know what I'm saying? If something doesn't look right or it seems too good to be true, it's probably not. Yes. Good. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, those are some of the interesting contradictions yes. and then things that jumped out because once you actually realize what's going on in this episode, you almost have to go back and watch it again. Yeah. Because then it's like, oh my God, now this makes sense. And I, I'll be the first to admit that the first time I watched it, I was like, huh? Mm -hmm. And then watching it again, I was like, oh, 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 wow. So that's really interesting. Now, at the end of the episode, you have Ridgeway and the little boy come back because mm -hmm. now they've tracked Cora down. And um, I believe Miss Lucy sells the whole thing out, doesn't she? She, well, she got busted because he was like, I can find you. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to your reputation and uh, messing with your camp of experiment, yes. yeah, you're going to give away that slave. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, Clark goes on the run. Unfortunately, she can't connect with, with Caesar. Caesar. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because when they confronted Sam, he, and she, he, he said, Sam! I thought you said this place was safe. And he said, I, I was in it. Corey was like, mm-mm, mm-mm. No, I don't want to hear it. Like, you don't know the town that you're taking us to? Mm-hmm. You didn't investigate? Mm -hmm. You have no knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so I'm still in question, but on the fence. Yeah, Because yeah. the look that he gave was like, I didn't know. Well, and he was trying to get him to the next railroad, which, by the sure. way... Let's talk about that. Can we talk about that? Because yeah. the Underground Railroad was not a literal goddamn railroad. Mm -mm. Like, it was not. It was not a train, damn it. Nobody caught a train, okay? Now, they referred to themselves as cargo, as freight, as those things, but the Underground Railroad was actually a series of paths and a network of people that got people from one place to the other. Yes. So, I did kind of 
hate that. And again, I know you haven't read the book. Mm-hmm. I've read the book. I was talking to Mr. King about this earlier, yeah. that there were just a lot of glaring... Uh, I don't know, miss that. Yes, yeah. contradiction. This is and, called a contradiction. And I, I told Mr. King, I said, you know, it's impossible. It's impossible for us in this day and age, having the rights that we have and the wherewithal that we have to even put ourselves into that situation. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it's the same for you, Whitey. Um, because, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> everybody wants to make it like this cute little fairy tale of, oh, it was wonderful. And even, you know, white people have a great way of... Um, trying to glorify slave days mm-hmm. and I'm like no you guys were turned into monsters the whole damn practice was monstrous and nobody was happy it was bloody it was horrible and it, and it, you know what I, I want to elaborate that when you say they're monsters because with Dred Scott like I did I had to do a little research mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. black history is not my strongest point although I, lo- I do love it I'm not afraid to look through it but I was looking at how he was uh, sold into slavery and by he had three or four different masters mm-hmm. and then his final master um what i can't remember her name but she didn't even want to give him up yeah she never even want to give give him up Mm-mm. but going a little bit back and then bringing it back to her because you, you know we were saying how evil she was you know how evil white people are because her husband had died and he she inherited the slaves in the land but Slaves were considered a commodity commodity of wealth. Damn straight. And she did not want to give him up. What made her give him up was when she married again and he was an abolitionist. Mm-hmm. And he was mm-hmm. like, it would be very contradictory for me to be promoting freedom of the slaves and you have one. Right. So she said, if I, if I sell my slave, they're going to have to give me at least a year's worth of wages that I'm going to lose, which yes. is $750. That was a lot of money back then in the 1800s. So much money. Yes. I don't know. What is that worth? Like That would have been a car. That would have been like a car. That would have been like a really nice 50, car. 50000 yeah. $100,000. Yeah, around 50000 65000 Yeah. yeah. Like so, 50000 was like around 100000 Yeah. And, and, and so I was like, wow. But reading Dred Scott... Again, this is a mentality thing that I struggle with, especially when I watch these damn shows. Mm-hmm. Like you had mentioned in our previous part one, it mm-hmm. was like a thousand slaves. And it's wow. like five slave masters, maybe yes. a little family. Why are you guys not raising up? Right. Isn't that sad? And that is the sad thing. Yeah. And it's just, it, it, so much of it is ignorance yeah. at the end of the day. But they kept stuff. us de- deaf and dumb, right? Yeah. You know, that's so much of the plantation yeah. is to keep you deaf and dumb. And there was some, I was reading a book recently and I got really offended because it was actually a book talking about addictions and they were talking about technology addiction. But the way that they opened the, the chapter was with a quote, a quote uh, from some Indian person, Middle East Indian, yeah. who said, um, You know, the difference between technology and slavery is that at least the slaves knew they were slaves. And I'm like, BS, because that's so much of it. Harriet Tubman has been known to say, I freed a thousand slaves, I could have freed a thousand more if they just knew they were slaves. Right. That so many people got consigned to this thing of, oh, this is my family. This is my home. This is just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And if conditions weren't that bad, you know, so that's where it was so like, I don't know, it's so evil when you think about it, like, and how everybody was, yes, and how everybody was kind of prey to it Mm -hmm. and prey to the thinking. So it's baffling, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's my Because you mentioned Dred Scott, although he went to trial, uh, as I, again, I was reading, there were on three occasions he was in a free state and he could have just said I want to be free Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but he didn't free himself Mm -hmm. and then you wait to the end and when he finally got free he he lived one year after his freedom one Mm -hmm. flipping year Mm -hmm. and I'm like what would make someone stay with an abusive person Mm -hmm. and it's calculated it is it's It's incredibly calculated they put the people, the slaves in the slave house, the yep. slaves in the fields. Yep. The light skin, the dark skin, mm-hmm. the young, the old, the children. Yep. The intelligence. Because yep. there were the children that they did specifically teach, you know, that were in the house. 
undercover, and then they had the light and the dark skin, the color. Mm-hmm. They they separated in a. Mm-hmm. They dis- and then uh, put us against each other. Yeah. Because usually, yeah. you know, the house Negro wasn't. Uh, talking you had to a black others. overseer too. Yeah. You seen him? Oh, so remember when they pulled so Cora out of her house? So many times you they had pulled black Cora out of her house. More like, often oh. than not, and what did he get? He got extra whiskey rations, yeah. and usually his pick of whoever he wanted to screw. Mm-hmm. And that was enough for him to keep everybody else in line. So, and sometimes that's as simple as it is when we look at the inter- entertainment industry yeah when we look at some of the fools that get all this money for whatever rap thing and they they're gone a year later yeah. it's like it's because they're playing into the tomfoolery they're playing into the image like little wayne you've been hoodwinked ben boozers i didn't like the effort i don't like him my son turned me on to something his music's, music's fine he is a his really music is, is fine he's not him as a person but him as oh, yeah. a person, he's no, a little, he's his a music high. is fine, but him yeah. as a person, he perpetuates the image that they want other young black men to follow in. Um, I'm out for mine, I'm doing the scissor up, I'm doing this, and all of that, and it's like, oh, let's throw all the money at him, because he's telling these ones how to think and how to act. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, that's why we don't have scientists making tons of money in this country. That's why we don't have people of, you know, like, Teachers. yes, yeah. exactly because it's like it, it all feeds into this mentality in America and it so goes back to slavery unfortunately you know because so much of slavery was about errors and pomp and you know like all of a sudden you have a thousand thousand people in your back well that makes you a millionaire mm-hmm. whether or not you actually have any money any, yeah. so yeah so it's very and interesting I, I do want to I do want to say I'm wondering why are they promoting all of these historical um, stories now. What are you still trying to perpetuate? Like when we were younger, we had roots. Mm-hmm. What are you... We're still seeing these stories. Right. But they're not showing stories of who we were before slaves. Right. So that right. is still something of food for thought. Yes, I agree. They're the narrative. Yeah, they're trying to change they the They are, and, and they do mm-hmm. it. They do it on the backs of, if you mm-hmm. think back to even roots, mm-hmm. they did that on the backs of civil rights, yeah. right? Yeah. And then here you have all this progress with Black Lives Matter right. and people starting to view us differently. Then it's like, oh, here's all your slave. Here's who you. Who, here's who you are. Yeah. Don't forget. You know, that's almost what. It, yeah. It's what it reminds me of. Did you Did you have any uh, more uh, stuff that you want to say? Because I did want to leave a very food for thought for our young generation. For those who are, you know, you still have that mentality. Like you can't win against. Give white them the food for yeah. thought, girl. Yeah. Give them the food for thought. Here's, here's something I want to point out. Just watching these slaves movies, you know, they would trigger me, make me angry. But when you start to go in with a different lens mm. and you look at society and how they, um, what do I say? They kind of pimp black people a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Their songs, their music, they sell chicken, mm-hmm. they sell chicken, mm-hmm. they sell Doritos. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you something. If you get smart and you really know who you are. For someone to be sold at $750 in the 1800s and someone that you're going to want me to promote your chicken for two or three hundreds of thousands of dollars, what does that say about the value of who you are as a black person in America? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. If you take that knowledge and really understand who you are and how valuable you are, Eliminate the fact of being slavery. Get out of that. Yeah. Think backwards. Yeah. We were kings and queens. Then you can really stand in your truth and the value. And and then when you see these these shows of Underground Railroad and Roots and whatever else they're going to come up to keep keep kind of get that. Uh, sometimes you know, especially when you're young, that can make you fearful. Mm. But to keep you stagnated, mm-hmm. you need to come out of that. And elevate yourself and just realize how valuable you are Mm -hmm. as a black person. Yes. I am worth more than silver and gold that comes from the earth. And this damn show proves it. And every other show that you see proves it. Yes. So that's my food for thought with these uh, historical contradictions. Yes. 
of the Underground Railroad. And thank you, Nick. Again, if you see another episode you want us to cover, we'll do it. Yeah. But I don't know if we're going to cover all of them. Uh, and that goes for everybody. Like, you yeah. know, if you're watching what we're doing and you like what we're bringing out in terms of our content, make suggestions. Yeah. Put it in the comments. Like, we are more than happy to give our viewers what they want. So, yeah, if you guys have stuff for us, we're more than happy to tackle it and take it on. So, well, thank you for watching part two of the Underground Railroad. Remember, you don't have to be asleep to dream. So, get up and get out and do something for yourself. I'm Ladios Muhammad, an actor with purpose. And I'm Raven Moon, an actor with passion. And we are actors, actors from the dark side. Are we recording? Taking away everything. Okay. Like, you know, there is a quilting company, mm -hmm. and the name of it is, uh, I want to say it's either Queen Martha or mm -hmm. Aunt Martha. It's mm -hmm. Aunt Martha. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, it's a picture, it's a silhouette of some old white lady. Mm -hmm. But I was reading back in one of my old slave narratives that there was a slave called Aunt Martha. No. And no. she would quilted so amazing that she actually got one of her quilts featured in Queen Elizabeth's castle and she's the mother of quilting mm -hmm. and yeah so they've taken every accomplishment every little thing you know and then attribute it to themselves and hell no hell no yeah they would even put it in there that's crazy mm -hmm. it's that's crazy though it's crazy so yeah when you find out how oh much god. oh my god Oh, yeah. How's that letter you Yeah, no, that, that, this is good. So good they're just kind of putting some fun stuff at the end of the video, but we also wanted to try, you know, see us with our glasses on. I wanted to see. I wanted to wear them, but they had like a glare, but we're girls who read and we're smart. Occasionally. Just kidding. <laughs> 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 if you have a good time, Usually I'm busy talking. Yeah. But yeah. You had a good time. We had a good time. Yeah, had a good time. Not even that was great. Glasses. Yes. I know, right? Yeah. Hey, Mr. Come King. Come to the library. Meet me <laughs> in the corner of the library. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye, y'all. Thanks bye, for having me. Bye, everybody. <laughs>